Hey everybody, Mike from Just Watch, back with another Just Watch episode. Everyone, thank you for spending a few minutes of your time with us this week. If you celebrate Christmas, Merry Christmas to everybody. And if you're on our calendar, our lunar calendar, Happy New Year's that's coming. I think I should have another episode out before New Year's, but just in case, Happy New Year's everyone as well. And also thank you everybody for a great 2018. Our channel grew a ton. I mean, I literally just started it on a whim back in February and we're up to over 4,000 subscribers and everybody, thank you so much. I'm glad you guys like the content and I'm just going to keep trying to do as much as I can as often as I can because I do like talking about watches. It's good stuff and just good fun and just really enjoy checking out all these different watches. So everybody, thank you again for subscribing, liking, commenting and everything throughout 2018. Regarding this watch, this is the Steinhardt Ocean 39 Explorer Dial. And this watch is, you cannot buy this on Steinhardt website. You can only buy this watch from nominwatches.com. They do a great job of shipping and inventory their, their websites first class, so no worries at all ordering from NOM and watches at all. I actually purchased this watch, so full disclosure, nobody sent this to me, nobody asked me to do this video. I was on nominwatches.com. I wanted to check out what they had, if they had anything new in Seiko to bring in to review, and I actually saw this right on the front page, and I said, wow, you know, I really had a positive impression of the uh, Steinhardt that I reviewed probably back in March or so. My only issue with it was it was oversized. It was basically an homage of the Rolex Double Red Sea Dweller, except for it was in this 42 and a half or 43 millimeter size. So I kind of took a little bit of exception to that. They really nailed this, on, or re they really nailed that on this with this being a 39 millimeter case diameter. I have to say it's really great on the wrist. So I've really been enjoying wearing it over the last few days. There are a few things that really kind of set me off a little bit not huge deal but something i just want to point out for you guys so that you guys are you know looking at purchasing one of these with all with your eyes fully open and that you know what to expect from your watch so anyways let's get into it let's get this watch under the lights and give you guys a closer look all right so here we are under the lights with the steinhardt ocean 39 Really enjoyed wearing this watch over the last few days, and so far, nothing to really strongly dislike at all. Just a couple of minor things that we will point out as we run through the watch. Let's take you through the case first. We have a wonderfully finished 316L stainless case. Really nice execution of both brushed and polished finish. It is 39 millimeters. That's across from the 9 to the 3, excluding the crown guards. 47 millimeters from tip to tip. 14 millimeters thick, and of course, 20 millimeter lug width. It wears extremely well on the wrist. We'll give you a wrist shot in just a few minutes. And actually, interestingly enough, it wears more like a five digit sea dweller than a Submariner. Most of that due to that extra protrusion of the case back here. Speaking of the case back, give you a look. It looks more like an Omega than a Rolex case back. Just wanted to show you guys that. One other thing too that I want to point out on the case where it does deviate from traditional Rolex design is first thing that really jumps out at anybody who knows Rolex is those lugs. You see that is squared off instead of rounded off and there is no lug bevel. So typically a Rolex would have, especially a vintage Rolex, they have a really nice, wonderful thick bevel that runs from tip of the lug to tip of the lug where you don't really have much of one there and also those squared off tips that you can see. We have a signed with the Steinhardt logo crown guard. Oh, actually I want to show you on the crown guards too. That's another big difference too. So you can see if you're looking at this angle at the crown guards, you can see how squared off those are there. So a Rolex actually, they machine it from the top and the bottom so that it has more of a rounded off feature. You can notice that a little bit when you're looking down at the watch. You can see how that's kind of flat there. Nothing that really bothers me tremendously. Just wanted to point that out. As far as the actual crown operation goes, it has the traditional counterclockwise direction for setting your time. Really strong positive feel with both threads and spring. And when we pop it out, of course, we have hacking. Look at that. I stopped it almost exactly at the 12 o'clock. Very positive feel between the crown and the minute hand, of course. There's no feeling of slop or extra play there as you're coming around. And I'm actually just going to come back around to 1010. And then when we're executing, closing this back up and threading it back down, no issues there at all either. It is just a very solid feeling. And even with gloves on, no problem at all to catch the crown and thread it back down. 
Let's talk about the dial here too. So one actually interesting thing that I found in my research on this is, so this is basically a homage to your Rolex 5513 Explore dial, which is demanding extremely high prices at auction these days. One thing that I found that was interesting is, so you have a very much a matte finished dial here. Rolex with their original 5513s with the Explore dial and the gilt, they were all gloss dials. Now, some of them did have a uh, kind of a matte finish clear coat applied over them, which kind of give it a semi, kind of like a semi gloss, but you can still see the gloss finish underneath on the Rolexes. So if you're ever looking at a 5513 Explore dial and you notice that it does not have a gloss dial, you'll know right away that it's either been doctored or it might be counterfeit. So just something to take note of. There's actually a lot of good info on the watch forums about this too. If you guys are interested, give it a Google search. I found it pretty interesting. As far as the execution goes on the Steinhardt, everything is really wonderfully done. Nice crisp printing everywhere. You have the Steinhardt logo, Steinhardt Ocean 39 at 12 o'clock, 100 meter, 330 foot submersible at the six o'clock. And then way down there in the minute track is the Swiss open minute track, of course, as a vintage Rolex would have, 369 and the baton markers. Really nice execution all around on this matte dial. I really enjoyed looking at this dial. Also, I wanted to point out it is the old radium superluminova. That's what Steinhardt calls it. I'll give you guys a look at the loom. Here, let's put this down right there. There's your look at the loom. It's a very strong and very active luminous material from Steiner. I think they did a really good job here. I really enjoy the color of the loom too, that kind of a, a gilt tint, that vintage gilt tint. I really like that look. Let's talk about the crystal necks. And this is actually one of my favorite things about this watch. You have this wonderfully domed sapphire crystal. You can see that really nice dome, very minimal distortion, and just that very slight step up out of the bezel Really like the domed sapphire crystal here. And Seiko, take note, you know, you have a 500 US dollar watch here with this wonderful domed sapphire crystal. I can't believe that Seiko can't get their act together to offer the same on all of their watches. The bezel on this watch is very tight. That's one of the first things we don't like about this watch. It is exceedingly so. It is, um, I think it's a combination of spring and some sort of resistance from maybe, you know, just being up against the crystal or something like that. But it is very tight. You know, when I compare it to what I have here on my Janot, you know, it's just super easy to operate. This is actually, of all of the watches that I tested this year and reviewed this year with 120 click bezel, this is actually the best one. And that includes a six digit Submariner and a five digit sea dweller. So the bezel action on this one is better than both of those watches and better than this one here. Not a huge deal breaker, just wanted you guys to have both eyes open if you're thinking about purchasing this watch. It is a little bit on the stiff side. It is aligned perfectly, however, and it is also no play, which makes me think that some of that stiffness is coming from a spring. You have an aluminum bezel insert here with a traditional a fat four type of a bezel insert. And one thing I do want to point out that I didn't personally notice, but reading on the forums about this watch is the bezel pip loom color. It does not match the loom color on the handset or on the dial. So not a huge deal to me, just something I wanted to point out. If you have, you know, if you're really detail oriented, that might bother you. It did not bother me at all. The handset on this is a wonderful gold tone, and I could not find in my research if that's real gold plating or not. My guess is probably not, but it's a wonderful gold toned Mercedes style handset with a really nice long minute hand, which is well into the minute track. Wonderful sweeping second hand, and of course that classic Mercedes hour hand. Very legible and easy to read. And also I think the scale on this handset is just a tiny bit bigger than it would be on the traditional vintage 5513. That's just comparing photos of this to photos of 5513s. Movement on this, the heartbeat of this beast, it is wonderful news in that it is an ETA 2824-2. It's wonderful because it is a great Swiss movement, very easy to service, very easy to find service technicians for, and plenty of parts available. So this is the Elabore 
level. They actually offer a bunch of different levels of this 2824. Elabore is adjusted to three positions. So you can actually move up from there where they adjust it to, I think, five or six positions, or there's actually a cheaper version of this available as well. The movement features 25 joules, 28,800 vibration per hour, 40 hour power reserve, and as we mentioned, it is adjusted to three positions. So good stuff from the movement there. Nothing to worry about there. This one's keeping very good time. It is running about three seconds fast per day. So good stuff there. I'll be interested to see if that changes over time as it breaks in a little bit. I know watches, automatic watches do that from time to time. Finally, let's talk about the bracelet here. So you have a wonderful finish on all surfaces of this bracelet, solid center links, a nice taper from 20 to 16 millimeter. Of course, screw pins for adjustment, which is what we want. Nice chamfering and beveling underneath so it's not going to catch arm hair and it's going to breathe. And of course, that just really nice finishing. You have that polished on the sides and the brushed on the top. You have nice job on the clasp as well. Machined and polished, highly polished inner clasp. Everything goes together beautifully there. Really solid click on the clasp with the clamshell, of course, and external pin tool adjustment for your micro adjust. Not a huge deal to me, especially for a $500 watch. You know, everybody would love to have glide lock underneath there, of course, but you know, you can only get so much for your dollar. And I just wanted to point out that polished clasp lock with the Steinhardt logo. One thing I did want to note on this clasp, just slight ding, slight check mark off on this, is that opening it from this position is very firm. So I think it's going to break in. I've actually noticed that it's gotten better since I purchased it, but I did want to point this out to everybody. Of course, we'd want it to be more on the strong side than the weak side for sure. So just wanted to point that out to everybody as we go along. Overall, I really enjoy wearing this watch. I want to give you guys a look, wrist check on this watch, and also uh, give you a look at the Genoa. So there's the Genoa. That's a 40 millimeter. This is a traditional... Rolex Submariner size, and actually this watch wears exactly like a five-digit Submariner, with the exception of the better bracelet, where this, as I said, wears more like a five-digit Sea Dweller, just because of the way it sits up off of the wrist a little bit. I don't know if you can see that there or not, if I turn it down. Yeah, so there's a look at how it kind of sits up off the wrist. I really love the size of the 39 millimeter my wrist is about 170 millimeters, so just under seven inches. I prefer wearing my watch above the wrist bones. Just, it fits me best there. My wrist is actually a little bit skinnier before the wrist bones. And then I don't like having it down in here too where the crown can get into the back of your hand, but really comfortable on the wrist all around and just really nice to wear. I took four links out of the bracelet, four full-size links out of the bracelet as well when I adjusted this down. So if you do have a larger wrist, shouldn't have any problem getting this to size your wrist. I imagine it fits up to like an eight inch wrist or so with no problem. All right, so that is it for the review. As we said, when we're going along, there's only a couple of things really to note about this watch. It, you know, and the main thing is it's kind of a stiff bezel. It's actually very similar in action to the bezel that was on the other Steinhardt that I reviewed back in March. And the other thing too is, you know, that clasp that's extremely tight to uh, dislodge, but you know, we'd rather have it that way than just flopping open. So, you know, and I'm sure it'll break in somewhat as it gets opened and closed a few thousand more times. Anyways, that is it everybody. Once again, Merry Christmas to everybody. If you celebrate Christmas and Happy New Year, if you are on our lunar calendar and we'll be back soon with another episode. If you like the content, please remember to hit that subscribe button. I think it's over here somewhere. <laughs> hit it over here for me. I'd love to have you guys along and we'll see you soon.